Hello, uh, welcome back. I'm going to share a small little step. This will be part three of the Oxbow Tote So Long. I wanted to show an alternate option for attaching the crossbody strap. This is how the crossbody strap is written in the instructions and the pattern. Um, the connectors are sewn into the side seams. Uh, this is ideal if you're a beginner. It's kind of the easiest route to go. If you're newer to bag making, not quite sure how everything goes together, I would definitely recommend starting with something like this. Um, and today I just wanted to go over a couple of different options if you have some special tools for some of it, uh, leather, and um, yeah, I just thought I'd go over that and give you a couple options. So this is a great option for beginners, but what if you're carrying something that is super heavy, especially for the overnight size, that weight um, will really put a strain on these side seams if you're carrying heavy objects a lot, um, or if you're just generally like rougher on your bags. So I'm gonna walk through a couple options for what you can do if that is the case for you. So we're lucky because we are making the bags ourselves and we can accommodate it to whatever suits us best and the materials we have on hand and our experience levels. The first option and the kind of one that I'll go through more in detail is to use our same little chunks of one inch webbing. For this first option on the alternate strap holder assembly, I am going to use that same one inch wide webbing, but this time I just cut it a little bit longer. This is about three inches long instead of the shorter size that's listed in the pattern for when you're sewing it in the side seams. So I've got my one inch D-ring, same as in the pattern. So I'm just gonna insert my D-ring and then fold my webbing over. And then what I'm gonna do is just bend my other half of my webbing up to match um, those raw ends together. So what you can do here is uh, do a little bit of glue, you could pin it, and then that will give you this strap holder. Okay, and we're gonna sew that on directly on our side seam of our finished bag. So what that'll look like is I'm just going to be sewing a rectangle and you can even do an X through it for reinforcement, just um, stitching over across this main stress point at the top here. You could even add rivets if you'd like, but those would uh, be optional. And what I'm gonna do is I'll be sewing it right on the side seam of my bag. So my tote is completely finished. This is a wax canvas and with a canvas lining. Um, you could go through the opening in your lining to just sew it through the exterior layer, but I think that would be just even a little bit more difficult, but it is an option. And then I'm just gonna place this on the side seam of the tote. So I would say you'd want at least an inch clearance here before the top edge of the bag. So again, I'm just gonna sew a rectangle along all sides and maybe an X through it. And additionally, you can do the rivets. So just I would just do that on both sides of the tote. So that's one option. Okay, so here's my strap holder. I've just got it folded over and the back looks like that. Um, and I've just pinned mine in place. Okay, and to the side I've got my finished bag. I skipped inserting the strap holder on the side seam, so just skip that step. And I've got everything together. The lining's all set and I've sewn that. And I've also top stitched. So I'm probably just going to eyeball it on this side, but I'm just gonna do an inch down from that finished edge of the tote. And then I'll measure and make sure it's the same on both sides. And then I'm just gonna sew that rectangle. And what you'll wanna be aware of is just keeping this lining side smooth and to make sure that it doesn't get folded over or um, kind of goofy. It's just gonna be a matter of smoothing that out and just going really slow and opening that zipper fully to keep it as flat as you can. It will be tricky. This is a wax canvas. This is probably one of the more difficult substrates that you can use for this step. It's just gonna be a little harder to move the bag out of the way, but it's just something to keep in mind.
Okay, so here is the little tab sewn on to the side seam. You're going to see that. And then all you do is clip on your strap. Um, so that's kind of what that looks like. And it would look like the same on the other side. Oh, I did want to go over I did sew backwards, <laughs> in reverse, to avoid stuffing my bag through the throat space of my machine. Um, if you had a softer, more pliable fabric that you were using, you could um, definitely just sew it all forward, but that's kind of a strategy if you need to use it. And here's the inside. I just make sure to use the bobbin thread that's matching and just get those um, extra threads trimmed, but that's what the inside will look like. Okay, so I wanted to show this other side sewn in. It's a little more difficult. You just have to make sure, um, actually it was this side, sorry. This side where the zipper end is, um, when you're sewing it, just make sure that you have the zipper all the way open and just to keep that end out of the way while you're sewing. The other thing I wanted to mention is make sure you have a strong needle, so at least a 14 or a 16 in there, and that will help kind of combat that those layers and hopefully make it a smooth process for you. So I also wanted to talk about if you were to have sewn it into the side seam and for whatever reason you're really hard on your bag, it, got snagged on something and it ripped out of that side seam, you could definitely just trim off your webbing. Um, let's say that this one is um, got ripped somehow or it's just dangling there. You could just cut your webbing really flush to this seam and then proceed by adding it like this. So it would just cover up that webbing. That's just an option if you need to do any kind of repair work, which happens. So that's what that looks like. Another option that I thought I'd kind of quickly go over just talking through, it just requires a little bit of specialty items. So I didn't include it in the pattern. Um, just wanted to mention it here for those of you who have the stuff and you want to use it. So um, I just have a piece of one inch by three inch leather. That's kind of the minimum length I would suggest for this kind of application. And then I've got my one inch D-ring. So then I'm just going to thread my D-ring through here like this. And what I'm going to do is I've got this side seam available and just get that zipper out of the way. And what you would do, and you've probably seen this in the bag making world, it's a pretty popular technique to use on a seam like this, but you would just rivet this leather onto the fabric through all the layers. Um, again, just making sure you have the distance measured here and do it the same on the other side, um, just for consistency. You can get really fancy with the leather. You could start with a one and a half inch piece and do some um, tapering in the center to hold the um, one inch D-ring. You could do rounded ends with a punch. Um, so yeah, it's just another opportunity to get creative and another option for the strap holder. So that is that. I'm just going to briefly touch on one more option and this involves quite a bit of modification for actually during the construction of the bag, but you could attach the strap holders to this top edge with leather like this or another, um, it doesn't have to be leather, it could be any kind of non-fraying textile, you could use cork. You would fold it over this end and rivet that in place course you'd have the d-ring on the top edge there but that that kind of method you would have to modify the bag during construction so that wouldn't be something you would do um, with one you already have but you would want to set your zipper you would start it back at least an inch instead of the three quarters of an inch that we did in the pattern and then I would do at least um, one and three quarters inches from this this end of the zipper where we did an inch and a half previously. So that'll just give you enough room so that you're not covering up those zipper ends with your leather piece. So that'll kind of give you a visual. Um, your zipper would just kind of either tuck down into the bag in this application or it could get threaded through um, the D-ring. So it would, I don't know how to explain that <laughs> except Hopefully that makes sense, but um, either way, um, I think those are some interesting options. Again, definitely a heavier one to modify if you went that route. I think that's all 
of the things that I had thought about and I'm sure there's a ton more. Again, it's really fun to make modifications to suit your needs and I'm just really excited to see what you guys make and I hope you'll have fun sewing your oxbow. See you later.